Tonight, Tulsa is nearing the 100th year since one of the deadliest acts of racial violence in American history. The 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, and while a much publicized event featuring singer John Legend has been canceled, there are other events being held in the city to commemorate the centennial. That includes a visit from President Joe Biden on Tuesday. The president is expected to join with local leaders. Other events include a march to retrace presidents or residents' escape from the massacre and an appearance from the last three known living survivors of the event. Before the attack began on May 31st, 1921, the Greenwood community had been America's wealthiest black business district. News Nation reporter Donna Terrell shows us the rise and fall of what was known as Black Wall Street. Tulsa, Oklahoma, a city diverse in its people and culture fueled by a complicated past some of which involves the historic Greenwood District, better known as Black Wall Street, a community of prominence and wealth for black people in the early 1900s. You could go down to the Green Greenwood Avenue, which is really the hub of, of what was called Black Wall Street, and find um, restaurants and grocery stores and movie theaters and taxi cabs and haberdasheries and furriers, but also doctors, lawyers, um, pharmacists, dentists. Many of the people who came to Indian Territory, Tulsa, the Greenwood, Black Wall, what we know as also Black Wall Street, had received their educations back, uh, particularly in the East, at uh, Morehouse and Spelman and Howard University. So they were professional people with professional skills. Black Wall Street's founding father, Ottawa Gurley from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, arrived in Tulsa in 1906. He came here already having wealth. He opened a grocery store and bought and sold land to other black people. Businessman Simon Barry ran a taxi and bus service and owned a chartered plane company catering to rich oil men. It was said that each dollar changed hands 19 times before it left the community. Black people living the American dream, but a volatile situation loomed. This was a really dark time. This is a period during which events that were called race rides were happening all throughout the United States. Greenwood, a fertile field for tension between blacks and whites. If one embraces this notion of white supremacy and one can look across the railroad tracks and see a very successful black community with people owning homes, driving cars, wearing nice clothes, if you're a white person and, and you're not doing well economically, then something is amiss. The ship has to be essentially righted. The Trigger, an encounter in the Drexel Building elevator in downtown Tulsa between teenagers Dick Rowland, a black shoeshine boy, and Sarah Page, a white elevator operator. Something happened that we don't know exactly what. Page said she was assaulted, though she later recanted, but a local newspaper embellished the story, adding fuel to the fire. Out of fear, Roland would be lynched. Armed black men came to the jail to protect him. They were met by a larger group of armed white men. Then, a gunshot. And as one of the massacre survivors says, all hell broke loose after that. An angry white mob set Greenwood on fire. The entire community burned, totaling 35 city blocks. The popular Dreamland Theater gone. More than 1,200 homes, 600 businesses, and the famed Wall Street left in ruins, as were a number of churches. And all this happened in only 18 hours. Reverend Robert Turner pastors historic Vernon AME Church, where only the basement survived the massacre. It was the first time airplanes were used to terrorize Americans. Not 9-11, not Pearl Harbor, but right here in, in Greenwood, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's estimated between 100 and 300 people, mostly blacks, were killed and many others wounded. Some of the survivors, including Gurley, left and never returned. After the massacre, the people who stayed here rebuilt Greenwood. In fact, in the 1940s, it thrived with well over 200 documented black businesses. Ironically, it was integration that led to the demise. When integration comes along and black people are able to spend outside the community, they're able to access more goods and services at better price points, it undermines the financial foundation of the community. Another blow, 
urban renewal in the 60s, where the city would buy up or condemn some homes and businesses. It also brought Interstate 244, which barrels right through the heart of Greenwood. It had really a devastating impact. Today, there are some businesses on Greenwood Avenue, but Vernon AME Church is the only property still entirely black owned. A ballpark in Oklahoma State University, Tulsa, occupy a huge chunk of land where homes once stood. But the community's rich history teaches us many lessons, including the power of the human spirit and the notion that some history bears not repeating. You know, I typically would, would paraphrase something that Dr. Maya Angelou said that I think is both simple and profound. She said, our history, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage, it need not be lived again. And need not be forgotten. Donna Terrell, News Nation, Tulsa.